Hey, I recently took apart a Behringer Crave uh, to have a look at what mods we can make on the board here. Namely the line-out 6.35mm jack socket and also how we can find the triangle wave from the 73340. Now if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I'm going to be making a couple more videos on the Crave coming up in the next couple of weeks, which may be of interest to you. <laughs> So, a couple of quick mods for the Behringer Crave, and the first one I'm going to do is look at fitting the 6.35mm jack out, and I'm hoping it's going to line up the space just here on the board, um, to come out through the side of the synth. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is find out where on the board we're going to need to solder this to. This is the line out socket just here. So if we take a patch cable from the line out and then we can check the continuity for the tip and sleeve. So we can see on the multimeter here that the tip is on the left hand pin and the sleeve on the bottom pin as we face it behind and also on the right pin so these are going to be our solder points here so the next thing we need to do is find a piece of wire for it possibly even cut up a patch cable but I do have some spare wire in the drawer. So now I'm going to go away and I'm going to solder this. I'm going to go do it elsewhere off camera because it's not going to be pretty. So now that we've got the two wires on for the tip and shield coming off the back of the line out. Before we solder onto the terminal here. We're going to need to mount this through the wood end cheek and through the case itself. So I'm going to have to line this up, measure it off and drill through here. And also through here. Feed this through and then solder the other ends on. I'll be right back. So here I've got the red going to the tip and the white going to the shield. That comes and it fits perfectly just in this part here. And we can check the continuity of that also. By testing the continuity between two leads from the VCA line and although you know as well as I do it's soldered directly to it it's not going to be a problem. So the next job is to have a quick look at where we can find the triangle out for these. So if we take a close look here we can see where the CEMV3340 is. In order to find the triangle wave we can go around the chip. Pin 1 is located nearest to this little circle here imprinted on it. Pins 1 and 2 are the temperature compensation circuit. Pin 3 is a negative supply. Pin 4 is the pulse or square wave out. Pin 5 is for pulse width uh, modulation. Pin 6 is the hard sync in. Pin 7 is for high frequency tracking. And pin 8 is the saw or ramp out. Pin 9, working back on the top side, uh, pin 9 is for the soft sync, pin 10 is the one we're looking for, that's the triangle wave out. To continue going around though, pin 11 is a timing capacitor for the VCO, pin 12 is a ground, 13 is, a, is for the linear FM input. 14 is a, a another resistor to ground, 15 is the frequency CV input and 16 is the positive supply. So here we can see where we can take out from pin 10 for the triangle wave. It is fiddly but it is doable, there are plenty of people who've done this. So if we solder out from pin 10 we could take that to a patch point that we can install somewhere on the case. 
From that patch point we can run a patch cable running into the external in which will allow us to mix between whichever VCO we have selected whether it's uh, the pulse, the square or the, or the ramp and the triangle itself. It may also be possible uh, to, to change the switch on the shape that you have there for the square and for the ramp and to put that as a three pole switch and have it switchable so you can select between either the square, the, the ramp or the triangle. Now a weird thing about the 3340 is that each wave shape out it, it sends out a different voltage signal. The square or the pulse is the supply voltage minus 1.3 volts so it gives it a range of 0 to 10.7 on a 12 volt supply. The saw or ramp is two thirds of the supply which would be 0 to 8 volts and the triangle itself is actually quite low you know, one third of the supply so that's a 0 to 4 volt range. Some people have found ways to increase that signal and there's plenty of information found online for that. If anybody's interested in finding out any more information on the CEM 3340s then the website for Electric Druid, they have um, so much information on these, it's unbelievable. Including various applications in some classic synths and, and how they're changed in order to give those classic synths their original characters. This is something that I will be making a video of though in the near future, so if you're interested at all in that kind of thing, then please subscribe, stay posted. Anyway, let's put the case back together and see how it all goes. So there we have it all back together and plugged in on the side. Now if you noticed earlier, I did actually have a backup just in case everything went tits up. In fact, not only do I have two of these, I now have three. Um, and in the next video, I'm going to be looking at polychaining these and using three of them together, three voices and making chords on a Behringer Crave. So please feel free to leave any comments, questions as ever in the uh, comments down below. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this at all. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see any more. Guess I don't need this anymore. Anyway, many thanks.